Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to get this uh, weed eater push mower. Run it again. It's a customer's job. He says he can't get it started. It sat uh, for a couple of years outside. Got some old gas in it, so uh, we're going to dump the old gas out. We're going to change the oil. We're going to pull the carb down and have a look inside there and check to see if everything's okay in there some fresh gas in it and go from there. So this might be a little bit of an informative one if uh, you guys got a mower that's been sitting around for a bit. We're just going to go over it real quick and uh, I don't think it's going to take too much to get her going. So stay tuned. We'll get you in the stand. We'll get the mower up on a bench here and get some tools gathered. Jump in. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pop the air filter off. Full of oil and crap. Just a foam filter. We're going to wash that out with some dish soap. Hot water and dish soap in the sink. Don't tell my wife. We're going to... Oh, it's got one of them plastic fancy carburetors. <laughs> yeah, completely plastic carburetor. So, I'm going to... My primer bulb's in good shape. I'm going to pull this off, just pull the backing off, we'll have a look in there, that's what I need. 8 mil, I think the other one's 7, there's two sizes in there, just be careful if you're going to pull that off, you don't mix them up, because they do only go one way. Let's get the 8s off first. Eight here, eight there. They thread into metal, those are fine thread. Get the sevens off, one here. These are a coarse thread, they pla thread into plastic. Where's the other one? There it is. holding this up. We got a crankcase vent tube is in there. There we go. Yeah, it's been sitting outside for a while. There's a stick stuck in the throttle linkage. We can get rid of that. Pretty sure we don't need that there. We'll give that a little wash with some brake clean. Yeah, that's that old plastic carburetor. If we pop this open, it's all plastic inside. There's a couple of little brass jets, but it's all plastic inside of there. It's pure craziness. <laughs> but they seem to work, so it is what it is. So I want to drain the fuel out of there. Let's see if we can do it this way. We're going to try and, uh, try and get this done with the least amount of mess. wouldn't be the first time there's gas on the floor but I'd rather not do that if I can avoid it I'll try and wiggle this hose to the end of that fitting on the tank huh maybe a better way we'll put this end back on So I started to pull that line off a little bit and you can see the liquid that's on my finger. That's water. That's not gas. So there's water in the bottom of that tank. So I'm going to pull it off this side. I'll squeeze this hose first with a pair of uh, needle nose vice grips. And then I'll pull this side off and that'll let, give me a valve basically. Well, I'm going to shut the fuel off while I'm working on it. Temporarily. So let's pinch that. You don't want to go too tight, you don't want to damage the line. I grab that clamp on the carburetor side, I'll take it off of this side instead. Get some needle nose in there maybe.
Come on. Off with you. I don't want to break things. Oh, there we go. It's moving. There. Right. So now I can use the vice grips to control the flow of fuel. So I'm just going to use a measuring cup. A little trough. Yeah, you can see there's, that's water coming out of there. Yeah. Okay, so it's in the measuring cup. I think I got everything under control here. Just release the vice grips. And it's flowing. And it's pure water. I haven't seen gas yet. Put the cap off there, let it vent. That's water, pure water. Well, I know why it wouldn't start. <laughs> They'll run on water. Can you imagine if small combustion engines ran on water? How cheap that would be? No, we'd end up paying a buck and a half a liter for water then. It would just make water more expensive. Wouldn't make running this stuff cheaper, it would make water more expensive. I'll give it a little tilt, see if I can get some more to come out. Try anyway. You know what, I think I'm going to have to take that tank off if I can. I'll take it off and flush it right out. But yeah, I just leave it, let it run, it's just water. I ain't going to drink it, but... That's water. You can tell it's beating up on my finger. It doesn't even really smell like gas. A tiny little hint, but it doesn't really smell like gas. Huh. That's the problem. Okay. I'm involved in getting that tank out of there. Can't be much. Looks like we got to pull the top cover off. And then this is probably just got one or two screws. Let's get our eight millimeter back on the little driver. Three screws. Recoil comes off. Gas tank just slides out. It's got two little retainer pieces in there. Just a little bent part of metal that's holding that tank down there. The machine's full of spider nests. Get you in there. Everything's plastic, I just don't want to break it. There, gas tank's off. It's just water in there. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll flush that out. These curbs do have a drain on the bottom. It's a hex. I believe it's a hex. Yeah, it's a hex but I won't be able to get my finger underneath there to do that, so I'm gonna slide that carb off of there. It's just on a, there's a little O-ring and a retainer. I'll slide the carb off. We'll take the bowl off, and we'll just make sure it's all clear on there. So, yeah. We're just gonna blow that up with compressed air. A little bit of gas dumping out now, but yeah, I'll blow, get some brake clean in there, blow it out with compressed air, and we'll get that one back rolling. Let's get the carburetor off there first. Well, there's our crank vent. So we can sneak you in there. There we go. Just tuck it out of the way. This car should just slide off gently. Just give it a little rock back and forth. This is just a vent tube that's kind of hanging in the way. A little piece back here. I'm not sure if you can see it. I 
not even really stuck in there. Come on. Out with you. There we go. Oh. Everything just fell apart. So this is what comes out of the back of them. The O-ring goes in, in the carburetor first, and then the retainer. Of course, conversely, you could put the retainer on the intake tube first, and then the O-ring, and then just slide the pop carburetor on. That's the way I'm going to do it. That way it will get these parts out of my hand and off the bench. There's only one hole on the top of the linkage. Got a Z-bend. Just flip her out of there. And there's that plastic carburetor. All plastic. There's that drain I was telling you about. Engines don't run on water. <laughs> Alright, we'll get to turn around. We'll get a top view of the carburetor on the bench. We'll get it tore apart. So I'm not going to go with my normal bird's eye view for you guys. That's where that little plastic piece for the uh, vent was. Just pop that bowl off, 7 millimeters. These bowls are actually quite sticky. Let's just find a place that we can gently pry it out. One of the ones that I did, I thought it was glued on. As I'm cracking this loose, there's water coming out of the vent. That is just water, there's no gas. <laughs> Can you hear it? There you go. Jeez, that, yeah, the bowl was full of water. Just want to make sure that there's no crap and corruption in there. So it looks like the bowl will actually go on either way. The way I took it off was the drain, where are you looking? The drain was over the pin or over the needle. Now, it's not all crusty and crappy. I'm not going to take it all apart. There's too much of a risk of breaking things. This part here will, will actually snap out and there's an emulsion tube and all kinds of stuff in there. I'm just going to blow it out with water. No, it's got too much water now. I'm going to blow it out with air. It's not even dirty, so. Yeah, we'll blow that out. You don't need to listen to that. We'll get her back together. I actually ran into a problem. The needle is not working. I have to pop that out of there. I couldn't get air, even air to go through that, uh, through the fuel inlet. So we'll just pop this out. It just unclips out of the plastic. Our needle is stuck. Here's the pliers. Yeah, doesn't even want to come out. I'm going to try and see if I can wiggle it off the float first. I don't want to break the float. Nope. So I'm going to have to get underneath it. What I'm going to do is right in... See if you can see it. I'm not even sure you can see it. You can just see the metal needle underneath there. I'm just going to get my screwdriver hooked under the needle and give it a little pop. Yeah, it's moving. Here we go. Oh yeah, that's a mess. There we go. There's our needle. That ain't good. Crusty stuff coming out of there. Ethanol fuel destroys small engines. That destroys carburetors, anyways. Seat looks good. I'm gonna clean this up. The rubber part of the needle looks okay. It's a metal seat with a rubber needle. 
So we'll get that cleaned up a little bit and see what. I'm just gonna use some scotch right here. Get the sides cleaned up. That way it should move better. And we'll get a little bit of carb spray on it. Yeah. I'm gonna blow the crap out of that with air. And uh, what I'll probably end up doing is cleaning up that seat a little bit and down in there. Can you see? It's gonna light on. There we go. There you go. Now you can see it. That's a metal seat. So I'll use a Q tip with a little metal polish on it and spin it in a drill. We'll shove it down in there. We'll polish that up. I'll polish this up. And uh, yeah, we'll get there. Hang on. Well, since we had water and everything else, I decided to pop this piece out. So I just take a small screwdriver, put it into the side, gently crack it, and it'll slide out. And it's full of water in there, too. There's that little brass jet I was telling you is in there. Just going to take it over the air real quick. Give it a couple of shots. Sure, you hang on to those little pieces because that that jet will come out of there. Just came right out my fingers, so and it's clear. There's no more water in there, so I'll take that body over there, give it a little little shot of air. There we go. Perfect. This little collar comes out of the uh, air filter side. Just got to line it up. You see it? The hole in the slot. There's a little notch in the bottom of the carb. I just get slid down in there. Just got to turn it a little bit. back in there because it's got to line up through a hole down here all right let's get this beast back together this is all blown out and clear it's all good this jet does come out real easy so <laughs> yeah, I say that and then it doesn't want to fall out so I tend to hold them this way and then to get it inserted I'm just gonna give it a wiggle because it'll there is an O-ring in there. You just gotta wiggle it till it feels like it's gonna pop in. I don't wanna force any of this stuff. You will definitely be having a bad day if you do. Yeah. This one doesn't wanna behave. Come on now, get in your home. Oh. There we go, clicked in. The problem was that the sleeve that I was just messing with actually walked out a little bit and wasn't allowing the motion tube to go up in there. Okay, so that's that's done. That's good. Let's get that seat polished. What I got is a little bit of chrome polish. We'll just put a dab on the end of this Q-tip. Just a little bit, you don't need a whole bunch. Get it up in there. Take that one out, put a clean one in. It's just a half a Q-tip. Get the residue out. Well, that looks brand new. See down in there now? How nice and shiny that is. Brand spanky new. So I'm going to take a 
blowgun and I'm going to blow air through the inlet. We're going to make sure that there's no junk down in there. Our needle is going to slide up and down real nice. And then it will be golden. Perfect. Do a test on our needle. Slides in, falls out. That's good enough. Yeah. Yeah, that was a mess. <laughs> piece of worn out emery I'm going to make sure that it's the edges of that needle are clean there's it's it's uh, triangle shaped so I'm going to make sure that the, the points of the triangles are clean enough that they're not going to bind up in that opening don't want to damage the rubber tip on there though well, that looks better than when it came out we get it attached in our float Get her close, put our float pin in, Gonna snap down on the carburetor, both ends, wow, float actually moves now. So with the float in that position, the fuel should be off, so I'm going to blow through it. I got nothing, I want to tip this upside down, the float should drop like so. That should allow fuel in, and it does. Golden. Give this a quick wipe. Paper towel. Nice and dry. We're gonna line our, line our drain up over that position where it was. No gaskets, just O-rings. Looks like we got her. These threaded in there. I'm gonna grab a wrench to do that. plastic parts. Okay, that's good. I'm going to finish cleaning out the tank. We'll flip you around, get another shot of that uh, green machine, and we'll get her put together. Alright, let's get the tank back on there. I blew it out, compressed air, shot a little brake clean in there, swished it around, Blew it out some more. Seems to be good now. There we go. Tanks home. Carburetor. Oh yeah. The linkage is moved under the fuel tank, of course. Snuck it in. Our O ring and retainer are on there already. Throttle rod actuator on there. Let's get this wiggled in there. Fuel line going on. I'll put the clamp on now that it's easy to access. Beautiful. A little vent tube that fell out. Throw it on the floor. <laughs> just gonna just blew through it to make sure it was clear. If there's a vent on it. It needs it. It's supposed to work. Let's get you in there. There we are. Home. 
bottom it out on the intake. Well, that's good. This is our crankcase vent that's going to go in the back of this air cleaner assembly, which is filthy. Full of oil and crap. Give her a little brake clean and a breeze. tube on there. Now you guys remember which was which? Which was the sevens, which was the eights? It's alright, you don't need to remember. You just need to remember that the coarse threads go into plastic. Well, like I said, coarse threads go into plastic. fine threads go into metal. There's a metal bracket behind there. This one and this one go into the carburetor. Those are your, those are your coarse threads. The other two are fine thread. They go into the steel bracket. Easy peasy. So I'm just starting these with a with a driver. I'm not going to run them home real tight anyways. Do that by hand. The metal ones is not a big deal. It's not a very powerful driver. It's it's literally a screwdriver. So give me my socket back. <laughs> I'll just put the nut driver on these. Snug them up. I suppose we'll put that top cover on now. The recoil starter. Still gotta go uh, wash the air filter out. That one started. That one started. That one started. It's just the three of them. 8 mil. When I mentioned we were going to uh, change oil. We're going to do that, but we're going to do it after it's running. Get it warmed up. Give the oil a chance to move a little freely. A little more freely. It'll flow out better. We'll get more of the old stuff out. It is the original oil. It, the, the mower is, a, is, I think, three or four years old. But it's been sitting for the last two or three years. And it was only used for one season. So I like to change the oil right after, like say, I buy a new lawnmower. I'll cut the grass once and change the oil. Then after that, it's once a season. Uh, that's my preference. Always follow your manual. But, that's what's worked for me. My mowers last forever. Alright, I'm going to go to the sink. Wash that dirty thing out. And we'll come back. Okay, so I got that air filter washed out. Nice and clean now. It's early enough in the morning. Wife's still in bed. She didn't catch me, so we're okay. So here's a pro tip. You're supposed to put a little bit of oil on these things. And it makes a mess everywhere. Put it in a sandwich bag first get a little bit of oil in there. I'm just using some, basically I got 5W30 in a squirt can. You don't want to soak it too much. You just want it a little bit of oil in there. And what you do is you massage it around and you want to soak the whole filter with it. But instead of getting your hands messy, just do it in a bag. Don't, you don't wring them because it'll break them. They'll start to rip apart. So. I put a little bit of oil on there. I just put a little squiggly lines around both sides. You can see I gotta work it in a little bit. And just work it into the filter. You want it saturated but not dripping. Dripping is not good. Dripping is a restriction. 
This filter is still in good shape. These eventually do they do turn to dust. We'll eventually need to replace it, but this one's just fine. And usually after this, what I'll do is I'll just I put a paper towel on the on the bench, put the filter on it, one side, and I fold the paper towel around and just squish it together. And the paper towel will soak up the excess. Any excess that we don't need is going to go into the paper towel. Just like so. You can see here. Put it on one side, fold the paper towel over and just, just push it straight down. And any excess oil just comes out. Soaks into the paper towel. And then we're fine. So, in she goes. Look at that rebuilt air filter. <laughs> rebuilt, refurbished. That's that. Customers don't like fingerprints. Gotta keep it looking neat when you're done with it. Wipe all the extra oolio off of there. So now we're gonna put a splash of uh, petrol in there. We're going to put a little gasoline, some 91 octane, no ethanol fuel with sea foam already mixed in because that's how I have my gas. Fuel here is always treated with sea foam and it's all 91 non-ethanol. And if you are Canadian, the only place I know of around here you can get it is going to be a Canadian Tire 91 octane and uh, Shell stations. Uh, there are 91 octane or most stations that I've seen their 91 octane are, uh, is ethanol free. Okay, so I'm going to put it on the ground, gas in, fire it up, warm it up, then I'll dump the oil. These engines used to have a drain plug underneath here. It was just a 3 8 uh, square that you would just basically stick a ratchet or an extension into and then loosen the plug and drain it out the bottom, but they haven't had those for a long time now. So now <laughs> it's so much easier. You got to tip the whole mower on its side and let it run. Oil run out of the dipstick hole, runs down the deck, goes underneath the motor mount, underneath the, the mo mount plate there, and it just makes a mess. But you got to do it. So we'll get you resituated and uh, fired up. Hopefully, I put enough gas in it. Just a splash. Maybe not. Hmm. I never did pull the plug out. admiring that nice Cub Cadet 1330 I recently picked up it's all there it's complete it runs but it doesn't drive so something's going on with the hydrostatic transmission I gotta figure it out that's gonna be a resale tractor but uh, anyways 
So I did let the mower run and it cleared right up. It runs much better now. Just letting itself sort it, you know, sort the carburetor and everything out. So that's all good. I did check before I fired it up. I checked to see if there was oil in it and there was. But so I just ran it till it was warm. Now comes a mess. So I've got, you probably can't see it, but the dipstick is out. Now I've got to tip the mower up on the side and drain the oil out. Let's see what kind of mess this is going to make. Yeah, right down the deck. But that's it. That's how you change oil on them now. Not overly dirty, but it is break-in oil. Which means if there was any casting or any metallic particles in the engine after they assembled it, they'll be floating around in the oil, so... We'll let our drain out. Doesn't take a whole, much, a whole bunch in this mower. It's like about most of a liter. Not horribly dirty, but break-in oil, it's the first oil that was in it, it's time to change it. We're going to refill it with straight 30. Straight 30 is ideal for the temperatures that this machine is going to operate here in this climate. Straight 30 is good from freezing to like 100 degrees. So 10 to be 30 is what a lot of machines recommend now. But 10 to be, and 10 to be 30 is good for cold weather, but who mows their grass in when, when it's minus 10 out? I don't. But 10 to be 30... Is only good for about I think it's I think it's 85 degrees or so Fahrenheit. Uh, well, the summers here get hotter than that, so I'd rather run the thicker oil. We don't cut our grass below freezing, so. All right, you down to drips. A little bit on the floor, a little bit on the deck. Nothing too crazy. So the blade is actually not even dull. It was only used for one season. It's a little rusty, but it's still sharp. I'm going to refill it with straight 30. Fire it up again, make sure that the carb didn't dump a bunch of fuel in the engine by having it up on its side. And then this one's done. Call the customer, tell them to get it. Then we can move on to something else. Thanks for joining me on this one, guys. I mean, yeah, it's not finished. All i got to do is put the oil in it. But anyways, thanks for joining me on this video. Don't forget to click the thumbs up like button. I, I'm getting lots of views, but I'm not getting many thumbs ups. Either you don't like it or just forgetting to click it. So, anyways, if you haven't yet, please subscribe and click that bell icon to notify you when I upload new videos. Till the next one, take care.